walls, editing walls. Just starting off in 3D, we're going to look at some options. So you'll notice here we have the curtain wall, and that curtain wall is right inside another wall. If I go into some of its controls, you can control its top offset, its base offset. Maybe we wanted there to be a bit of a curb on this, so we could say 8 inches base offset. If I just zoom in again, you'll notice that that's been changed. I'm going to orbit around, so shift, roller wheel button. So I could do the same with these ones too, so that one and that one and just say your base offset is 8 inches. Enter, and then that'll edit both of those. Okay, what about the length? Well, if you click on one of these, you'll notice that it has two grips. They're at the bottom. They're actually at the level that the wall is associated with, and that's this right here, the base constraint, and that's that main floor. Now, you'll notice here there's a dimension. I could type in that if I wanted to and just change the length, but you can also click on a grip and drag with curtain walls that are embedded in other walls, you have to be a little bit careful because if you go off the wall, it'll do that, and it'll just disassociate itself with the wall. So I'm just going to undo, and there we go. So I could click on the wall again, and then I could click in its dimension, just type in 14 feet, and then there it goes. So the same is true with all these walls. Okay, so we can see, for instance, this wall here. You could click on it. Notice it has an offset minus four feet, so it's going down four feet, and it's going up to the main floor level. You can also create walls based upon existing walls, so I could right click and I could do a create similar. So I'm just right clicking on this retaining wall, create similar, and it's going to take all of the properties, and then I'll be able to draw another one. Now you'll notice here that it's allowing me to click up here. Let's just see what happens. I'm going to click at the top. So you can see there that it's kind of drawing it a little funny. So this is where sometimes you have to just watch the properties as you're editing them. So I'll just right click create similar and we could just draw it maybe in another view like from the basement up or something like that. I could right click on this retaining wall, use create similar and then just draw it back a little bit and then go back to 3D. You could click on modify, click on the wall. And then again, notice you can pull that back, make that a little bit longer if you wish. Okay, I could also do the same with this one. So right click, create similar, and again, it's having a hard time knowing where to draw. I could force it right now and just say that I want that to be at the main floor. And then I could just draw it sort of like this. I'm just drawing it right at the corner, and then I'll draw it to there. Okay, and then I can click modify again. If you hit escape twice, it's basically the equivalent of clicking on Modify. Okay, so we could spin this around. If there's a problem connecting the walls, just click on it and drag the grip onto the other one. And there they go. Now they connect. What about using dimensions? We want to be dimensionally accurate, of course. So let's go to our main floor floor plan. Double click on that. And let's just use our dimensioning tool and some temporary dimensions to modify what we've done. So for instance, if we click on this wall, you'll notice that there's some dimensions here that pop up. Those are called temporary dimensions. Of course, you click in the object first, then you'll see them. But you can click in them, and then you can click on the dimension and give it an exact dimension. Where is the dimension going from and to? This little grip on the temporary dimension can be moved, so you can click on that little grip, and you can sort of drag it around. So what I'm doing, first of all, is clicking and holding with my left mouse button on that grip and then I'm gonna just hit the tab key but not press it down and hold it I'm just gonna go tab 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 and when you see that inside wall highlighting let go so it takes a bit of practice but you can do this okay now I have an end grip this is the grip for the wall this is the grip for the dimension if I just click on that and drag it and then tab now that's going from there to there so I have a sketch with some dimensions on it. Let's just take a look at that and we'll put a little bit more accurate dimensions to our interior walls. So we have a 23 foot 2 and a 29 foot 1. Okay, so this is 23 foot 2. Okay, and that's from the inside faces. Now what about this length here? How do you get that length? Well, you can just click on this wall. Sometimes these dimensions, they don't always go to where you want them, so you may have to do some stretching. So if you just click and hold on that little circle on the dimension, we can drag that up, and then I tab, 
let go, and there we go. Ah, be careful with these grips. Okay, so let's go from there and just drag that grip up to tab there. Okay, let's find out what that was. 29 foot one. Okay, so 29 foot one. Okay, next one, this wall right here, we want that to be nine foot 10. Okay, so we can click on this wall and make sure that's nine foot 10 on the inside. Okay, so we're gonna click on this wall and make sure our dimensions are going to the inside. I'll just tab, let go, click, hold, tab, let go, and then click in the dimension, nine foot 10, enter. Okay, let's do a few more. So this one here is 18 foot 10. Okay, so I'll click on that wall. And again, we're gonna just adjust these witness lines. If you just click on it, I was clicking and holding and using tab, but you can also sometimes just click on it and it'll switch faces. And let's see if we can do that in this case. Uh-huh, okay, so that's good. So this was 18 foot 10. Now, before I hit enter, why did I click this wall and not that wall? Well, because we already set this wall's distance. So if I were to click on that and change it here, it would adjust this wall, but that one's in a good place. Okay, so this right here, is the one that we want to move. So 18 foot 10, hit enter, and then that'll drop it down. Okay, just a couple more. So we've got 20 foot 11. It should be in the right place right now. So let's just click on one of the walls and see if we can find a dimension that we can use. Maybe this one, we'll just drag that right over here and tab and let go. And then I'll click on this multiple times. Okay, so 22 foot two. Okay, so it looks like we're a little off, but we have this dimension, this one, and these ones set up. Let's leave this. We'll come back to editing the walls a little bit later. But for now, we have a good idea. One last thing. I noticed that it doesn't look like these walls go all the way. It looks like they're stopping at the foundation wall. So I'm just going to drag those in. There we go.